Welcome back, dear children. So, today, let's begin our class with a fun activity. This activity is the third activity given in your textbook. Today, in this class, I will be introducing you to a new teacher. Her name is Rose. Hello, students. My name is Rose. I will be taking you today's English class. So, shall we begin? Here in the board, I have written some tongue twisters. There are three tongue twisters. I will be also selecting three students to read these three tongue twisters. After that, I will, I will give you very common and simple tongue twisters. Make sure you read it loudly and fastly. A good cook could cook as much as cookies as a good cook who could cook cookies. Cook, cook. Black bug with a big black bear, but where is the big black bear that a big black bug? The six to six, six to six to sheep is six. Okay, very good. Okay, now I will read you some other tongue twisters. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, where is that pack of peppers Peter Piper picked up? I'll say it slowly. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, where is that pack of pickled peppers that Peter Piper picked up? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck uh, he would as much as he could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. So I will say it slowly. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He could chuck he would as much as he could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Now next one. Next one. If a hot and tot tot could talk, the tot could totter. Out to the hot and tot to be taught to say out or what out to be totter. Now I will say it slowly. If a hot and tot tot could talk, the tot could totter. Out to the hot and tot tot to be taught to say out or what out to be totter. Out. Next one. I slit the sheet, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. And so, I slit the sheet, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. Now, next one. A proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup. I slay it slowly. A proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup. Next one. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. I will say it slowly. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. Next one, World Wide Web. I will say it slowly, World Wide Web. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. A big black bug with a big black dog on his big black nose. Big black bug with a big black dog on his big black nose. Okay students, now let's move to activity four. Activity four. The English club in a school has decided to stage a play based on the story A Snake in the Grass. You are asked to prepare a script based on the story. Can you complete it? So, activity 4 is to write a script based on the story A Snake in the Grass. So first let's read A Snake in the Grass. So who are the characters of the story A Snake in the Grass? Yeah, mother. Four sons, neighbors, old beggar, seven tasa, then the snake charmer. Now, setting the courtyard of a house. Curtain rises. The courtyard of the house. The mother, her four sons and seven tasa are obviously frightened and are searching for a snake. An old beggar enters. So, here they have described the scene from the old beggar's arrival. So, you need to write a script. You need to complete the script by writing the scene from the old beggar entering to the bank club. Okay, students, I hope you can write it individually. Activity 5. 
Given below is a crossword puzzle. Fill in the blank space with suitable letters to get the names of implements. Find out what these are used for and fill in the blanks below. So, in magazines and in storybooks, we'll play crossword puzzles, right? Like that, here we have to complete a crossword puzzle. We need to fill the blank space with the suitable letters to get the names of implements. So, what are implements? Yeah, implements are tools or utensil or other piece of equipment that is used for a particular purpose. So, in this given crossword, we need to fill the blank space with the suitable letters to get the names of implements. Here, they are, there are three sections, downwards, across, and what are also in upwards. So, first we are going to check the words written downwards. So, the first word written downwards is the word number two. They have given us a clue. A tool used for digging the soil. A tool used for digging the soil. The letters are a S P. One letter is missing. D E, which is the word, which is implement. Yeah, spade. Spade is a tool used for digging the soil. So, the missing letter is A. S P A D E. Spade, a tool used for digging the soil. Now, the next word written downwards is the fourth word. So, the letters are CR, then two letters are missing, BAR. Yeah, crowbar. By hearing the letters, it is very simple that the word is crowbar. So, what, are, what is the use of crowbar? When we, re when we were reading the story, we learned the meaning of the word crowbar. What was it? Yeah, it was an iron bar with a flattened end used as a lever. So, in the given space, you need to write a tool made of an iron bar with a flattened end, usually used as a lever. A tool made of iron bar with a flattened end, usually used as a lever. Now, the next one is the fifth word. M O dash E R M O dash E R It is very familiar word. What which is the word? Yeah, MOA. So what is MOA used for? Yeah, it is a machine for cutting grass. So MOA, a machine used for cutting grass. Now next uh, now the last word written downward is the sixth one. R A K E. So there is no any missing letters here. R A K E. They have given the letter R A K. The word R A K E. What is it? Rake. So what is rake used for? Yeah, it is a tool used for drawing together fallen leaves or for leveling soil, etc. So rake, a tool used for drawing together fallen leaves or leveling or used for leveling soil. Next, we are going to complete the words that is written across. So, the first word written across is the word number one. The letters are GR, one letter is missing, SSC, two letters are missing, TER, which is the word, yes, grass cutter. What is grass cutter used for? Yeah, we all know that it is a uh, the grass cutter is used for cutting grass. So yeah, in there, uh, in the space provider, right, the tool used for cutting grass. Now the next word written across is seventh one. K N two letters are missing. E, which is a word. Yeah, knife. So what we what is knife used for? Yeah, we all know that we use knife for cutting things. So knife, a tool used for cutting things. Now next words are the words that are written upwards. So the word written upward is the word number three. The letters are S C Y. One letter is missing H E, which is the word kite. 
Scythe is a tool used for cutting long grass, corn, etc. So, S C Y T H E, scythe. The tool used for cutting long grass, corn, etc. So, I hope you complete the crossword puzzle. So, for let's look at the answers again. The words are written downwards. Uh, the word number two, spade, S P A D E, a tool used for digging the soil. Then the word number four, C R O W B A R, crowbar, a tool, a tool made of iron bar with a flattened end used as a lever. If, now next one, uh, fifth uh, word number five, M O W E R, mower, the machine for cutting grass. The word now next word number six R R A K E rake. The tool used for drawing together fallen leaves or for leveling soil. Words written across word number one G R A S S C U T T E R grass cutter. The tool used for cutting grass. Word number seven K N I F E knife. The tool used for cutting things. Now the words written upwards, word number three, S C Y T H E, scythe. The tool used for cutting long grass, corn, etc. Now let's move to activity six. The boy in the story, how far is the river, comes to know that reaching the river is a Herculean task. The words given in italic is an example of an idiom. Here, it means a work that requires a lot of effort, strength, or determination. Now, read the conversation between Mohan and Govind. In the question of activity 6, there, uh, there is a sentence, The boy in the story, how far is the river, comes to know that reaching the river is a Herculean task. So, the words Herculean task is given in italic. It is an example of an idiom. So, what are idioms? An idiom is a group of words whose meaning is different from the meaning of the individual words. For example, to add fuel to the fire. Here it means to make a problem worse. The meaning is to make a problem worse. So the words like these are called or the sentences like these are called idioms. These uh, sentences have a different meaning from the meaning of the individual words. So. An idiom is a group of words whose meaning is different from the meaning of the individual words. An idiom is a group of words whose meaning is different from the meaning of the individual words. For example, to add fuel to the fire. Here, it means to make a problem worse. So, uh, another examples for idioms are rain, cats and dogs. What did it mean by it is an idiom. It doesn't mean by the cats and dogs are raining. It means by rain very heavily. So rain, cats and dogs, it is an idiom. So the, the meaning of this sentence is to rain very heavily. L like that, there are many such idioms. To take one's heels, it means to run away. Or smell a rat. It means having a feeling that something, uh, something is wrong somewhere. Like that or um, lead a dog's life. It means by a life of misery. Like that, there are many idioms. Hello students. Our activity six of the textbook is to learn about idioms. Before this video, we have uploaded a video based on color idioms. To watch that video, see the link in the description box below. So now let's learn more about idioms. Here there is a conversation uh, uh, given, uh, the conversation is between Mohan and Govind. So in their conversation, we need to identify the idiomatic expressions. For ex uh, idiomatic expressions. Let's read the conversation. Mohan, who won the match? Govind. India played very well in the beginning, but then Australia, you know, is a tough team. Michael Bevan turned the match in their favor, but our Harbhajan Singh then worked miracles. Mohan, stop beating about the bush and tell me which team won. Hit the nail on the head, please. 
that is the conversation between mohan and govind so what is the idiomatic expressions from the conversation about yeah don't the match in their favor then which is other one stop beating about the bush hit the nail on the head yes right dynamic expression from the conversation are turn the match in their favor stop beating about the bush hit the nail on the head now let's get to the next question you can find a list of idioms and call them a match them with their meanings and call them b you may refer to a dictionary so here uh, there are two columns column a and column b so in column a they have given idioms and in column b they have given their meanings but they are not in a proper order we need to match them with their correct meanings we need to match the idioms to their correct meanings to column b so to complete this you can also use dictionary column a pros and cons a feather in one's cap keep one's word let the cat out of the bag so these are the idioms given in column a now in column b the secret is no longer a secret do as one promises the arguments for and against an achievement of which one can be proud of so these are the meanings given in column b okay now match the idioms with their meanings in column b pros and cons pros and cons the arguments for and against pros and cons match to the arguments for and against second one a feather in one's cap a feather in one's cap the answer is an achievement of which one can be proud of a feather in one's cap an achievement of which one can be proud of third one keep one's word the idiom is to keep one's word the answer is do as one promises do as one promises fourth one let the cat out of the bag let the cat out of the bag the answer is the secret is no longer a secret pros and cons the arguments for and against pros and cons the arguments for and against a feather in one's cap an achievement of which one can be proud of a feather in one's cap an achievement of which one can be proud of keep one's word keep one's word do as one promises keep one's word do as one promises let the cat out of the bag let the cat out of the bag the secret is no longer a secret let the cat out of the bag the secret is no longer a secret so these are the idioms and its meanings to be matched in the uh, matched from column a to column b okay students now let's move to the question fill in the blanks choosing suitable idioms from those given above here there are given many sentences to fill in the blanks we need to choose the suitable idioms that we learned and we need to complete the sentences first one when the thief was questioned he dash when the thief was questioned he dash what will what will happen if we question a thief or why are we questioning a thief yeah we question a thief to know the secret the secret that he is hiding from everyone so when the thief was questioned he dash which is a suitable idiom we can use here yeah let the cat out of the bag what does it mean by the secret is no longer a secret second one our school has won the first prize in the state level hockey competition it is dash so if our school has won the first prize in the state level hockey competition we will be very proud of our school so which is a suitable idiom we can use here yeah a feather in one's cap a feather in one's cap so our school has won the first prize in the state level hockey competition it is a feather in one's cap third one before we take a decision on an issue we must examine the dash of it 
which is a suitable idiom over there? Yeah, pros and cons. Before we take a decision on an issue, we must examine the pros and cons of it. Fourth one, give promises only if one can dash, which is the idiom that we learned about promise. Yeah, keep one's word. What does it mean by do as one promises? So give promises only if one can keep one's word. So uh, once again, when the thief was questioned, he let the cat out of the bag. Second one, our school has won the first prize in the state level hockey competition. It is a feather in one's cap. Before we take a decision on an issue, we must examine the pros and cons of it. Give promises only if one can keep one's word. I hope you understand activity 7. Now let's move to activity 8. Read the following sentence from a, from a snake in the grass. Here there is a sentence that is taken from the story A Snake in the Grass. The sentence is, The college boy murmured, I wish I had taken the risk, not the water pot from Dasa's hand. Which is the sentence? Yeah, this is the last sentence of the story, A Snake in the Grass. Here, the college boy is wishing that he had taken the risk, not the water pot from Dasa's hand. Now, look at these people below. What do they wish for? Here, there is a boy, a man and a girl. They each are saying something or they each are wishing for something. The boy is saying that, I wish I had won the match. I wish I had won the match. The man is saying that, I wish I had owned a car. Then the girl is saying that, I wish I were a bird. So the boy is wishing that he had won the ma match. The man is wishing that he had owned a car. And the girl is wishing that, she were a bird. Like these people, sometimes we will also wish for something else, right? So, we use I wish to express regret. To express our regret, we also refer to situations that are unreal, impossible or unlikely. For example, we were walking on a road. Suddenly, a accident happened on just in front of us. So sometimes we'll say that, I wish that doesn't happen, right? Like that, we use the uh, word I wish to express our regret or refers to situations that are unreal, impossible or unlikely. Now, the question is to complete the following sentences. The first one is, I wish I had. What we can use there, yeah, we can write, I wish I had won the match or I hit I wish I had won the competition like that the second one is I wish I I wish I had owned a car or I wish I had owned a bicycle third one is I wish we can write I wish I were a bird I wish I were a butterfly like that then you need to complete the other three sentences which starts with I wish I hope you can complete it individually Okay students, the bell rang. Today we learned. Okay students, the bell rang. Today we learned six activities. The first activity we learned today was about tongue twisters. Then we learned the, cr the crossword puzzle. Then we learned about idioms. Then last we learned to make sentences using the word I wish. On the next class, we have to learn the balance tree activity, activity 9, activity 10, and activity 11. Bye-bye, students. Bye-bye, students. See you all at the next class. Thanks, everyone, for watching and world. If you love this video, please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon. That way, you won't miss any of our new updates. And to watch the previous classes and the upcoming classes of this video, see the link in the description box below.